Hey gamers, Maniac here with GameAccess.net. Um, well, let's just get the cat out of the bag right now. For those of you who don't know, uh, Microsoft has officially announced and they've sent the emails out to uh, Xbox Live users as well, including myself, that um, basically a major announcement will be happening on the 21st of May. We don't know exactly or they didn't specifically go into detail about what was going to be shown, but it was pretty obvious given the lettering and the choice of the of the words that they used. They had closed it with hashtag Xbox reveal. Um, specifically stated that um, another you know the next generation of Xbox is 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 being announced. Uh, it's highly likely that they're going to be showing off the next Xbox. Now, for what we know right now, they did not announce a name. So we don't know what they're going to be calling it. Um, I know that there have been some names kicked around, but um, in all likelihood, none of those have actually uh, stuck, or, or at the very least, that they were just considered either rumors or, or the end of it, or that was the end of it, or, or, or fakes. Um, the other uh, announcement, it's highly, highly likely that they're going to keep the Xbox name, however, as a branding tool, because that was part of it. So if they are going to release the next Xbox at around the same time where Sony has already made the announcement of the PlayStation 4, there's a lot of things that Microsoft can do in this highly critical time to basically upstage the PlayStation 4. Uh, the, Play uh, the PlayStation 4's announcement event, and you can check my YouTube channel if you want to see it, uh, my analysis of that event for yourself, um, left a lot wanting. Um, it did not go too much into hardware. It did not go too much into games. And for what it showed, left it still it left me as PS3 owner and a PlayStation, former PlayStation 2 owner, a former heck even a former PlayStation 1 owner, um, a lot to be desired. So they only showed off two games from two of their major. Um, platforms, so the two of the major staple or, or series, uh, one of which didn't even include the same main character as <laughs> the previous game, established games had. Uh, and in another case, they, uh, they didn't show, uh, they, they showed some multi-platform games that were already announced for other, for other currently existing platforms. So they left a lot to be desired. Here's, I think, what Microsoft needs to show at this event. And this is, I think, what a lot of gamers are kind of hoping for. Now, obviously, you may have your own opinions about what they should be showing. But for me, what I think Microsoft would work best with would be if they were to show the next system, say what it can and can't do, just out front, and then show off some games that are from staple franchises. So we can have something to base the graphical fidelity improvement over. That's where I think the PlayStation 4 announcement failed. We got to see a lot of new titles and a lot of multi-platform hits, but nothing that really showed a graphical improvement, likely because, well, let's face it, we had no, we had, because they had showed nothing from previous, you know, really nothing, we had nothing to base these on. Had they showed a new God of War or something like that, we could have seen the improvements of Kratos or something like that, but they didn't. Uh, so basically, because they showed a lot of new games, we got to see, oh, that looks nice, and oh, that looks nice, sure. Uh, but nothing really to, to have a frame of reference on. And I really think that Microsoft can improve that by showing us some, some of our staple, fra their staple franchises, showing us new games, uh, particularly new games from developers that they've had deals with that we would know that you know we would know them from uh, being on Xbox platform. So <coughs> let's just get this out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a stack of games here that are Xbox 360 games. Most of them are Xbox exclusives, but all of them are uh, games that uh, that really were from Microsoft developers or or third or or. or Developers that had shown themselves or established themselves as, as as working well on the Xbox or the Xbox 360, and 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 creating some franchises that we all know as Xbox franchises. And I think that if Microsoft wants to get their first foot forward, 
uh, their best foot forward immediately, what they should do for this Xbox reveal is show the next generation of some of these games that I've got here. And I'm going to show you and tell you why. We're going to start off with the big elephant in the room. And I have many reasons why I'm going to be showing this one first. Particularly because we already know that this game is coming, but we haven't seen anything of it yet. Uh, Microsoft has already announced that it is in development, um, and it is coming, but we haven't seen it yet. And I think we all know that this is a platform, is a game that will be ending up. Uh, we're getting to see the next Halo game. I'm just showing Halo Reach right now, but Halo 5 is in development. Microsoft's and 343 Studios, when they announced Halo 4, did announce Halo 5 and Halo 6 at the same time. Halo 4 is already out, but there's been no announcement of Halo 5 yet. And I think that if Microsoft wants to show something new, you know, show something to really show off their system, the original Halo was a launch title for the original Xbox. The Xbox 360 did not launch with a Halo title, and I think that that really is kind of what got some people immediately. Um, or maybe, I really did remember, I specifically didn't actually buy uh, an Xbox 360 until after uh, Halo 3 actually was announced. So, yeah, I, I really think that um, if they want to put their best foot forward, have Halo 5 shown at this thing. Maybe they might not be able to make launch on it, but... You know, 343 has shown they have been able to make multiple projects at once. So it could be quite likely that the reason why we haven't seen Halo 5 yet is because it's already in development at uh, from a separate team at 343, and 343 can't show it because it's an Xbox, or next generation Xbox reveal. So I think what they should start off with, or end with, would be a next, X, uh, next Halo game. Right? In particular, Halo 5, which will continue the story of Halo 4. Next one, um, we're not going. We're going to uh, this one. I'm going to be showing for diversity. I'm going to talk about this one for diversity. Um, it also is to answer something that was shown for the PlayStation 4. For the PlayStation 4's reveal, now everybody knows that the big PlayStation 4 property is Gran Turismo. Uh, nobody is going to have a pro. No, nobody would pro. You know, that's like a big, big racing property for them. Gran Turismo 5 is a PlayStation 3 exclusive, but Xbox actually does have its own racing. Uh, platforms and its own racing uh, properties and obviously probably right now a lot of people have their own you know maybe project Gotham racing or things uh, things like that and so this I think that they wish they should show is like a next generation of project Gotham racing game and this is just project Gotham racing 3 it was a launch title for the original Xbox 360 um, there was a project Gotham racing 4 that was also released on the Xbox 360 a couple of years ago um, so my guess is is that this would be like PGR5 or something like that. But it would be cool, and I know that a lot of develop a lot of gamers are more than you know prefer more than just action games. They want diversity in their platform. They want you know a racing game is you know racing games are popular. Racing games are important. And Project Gotham Racing 3. Oh god, this uh, this version of the game I got. Oh gosh, I think I got this for free from Microsoft actually, <laughs> um, because I had I've gotten two Red Rings of Death. Uh, and they wanted, I asked for a refund on my Xbox Live account, at least for a couple of months, but I was, I was negotiable um, because they weren't acknowledging Red Ring of Death as something that actually the Xbox 360 was doing at the time. It was that recent. It was, it was that new to release. Uh, my, Xbox, my original Xbox 360 died in four months. And uh, when I called Microsoft after the second Xbox because they sent me a DOA one as a repaired unit, and I sent it back uh, saying that it wasn't DOA, it was DOA, and they were in the process of replacing it, it was like two months I was waiting for a new Xbox and um, I called them for a refund of my Xbox Live because I, I, I wasn't going to be crazy. I just kind of wanted something and uh, I, you know, if they had offered me Microsoft points or something like that, I would have taken it. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't think they could have actually refunded me Xbox Live months, but they sent me a free game. <laughs> I, I'll take it. I said I was negotiable, so they sent me Project Gotham Racing 3. It's, a, it's pretty much, like I said, it was pretty much one of several games that people got at the Xbox 360's launch. And it was, of course, the project, earlier Project Gotham Racing games were on the original Xbox and things like that. So this was a big staple. Um, racing games sell. You know, racing games are popular, and if they're well made, they'll transcend just racing gamers playing them. So if you want to show off graphical fidelity, the PlayStation 4 already announced that they are doing the Drive Club game. This a new Project Gotham Racing game 
could very well be Microsoft's answer to that. And you say, oh yeah, you want driving games on your platform? We got driving games too. Take a look at this. And it's from a, a property that you know already. So that's my, that would be a good thing to talk about. Next up, let's talk about third parties um, and second parties. Everyone knows that uh, Microsoft is a pretty good development platform to work on. Um, okay, maybe I'm just expi explaining that. But a lot of third-party developers made Xbox 360 exclusives uh, so that um, and established themselves and established that their games would be on there. One in particular, Remedy Games, actually was um, basically working on that when they did... Alan Wake on the Xbox 360. This is probably one of my favorite games on the Xbox 360. I loved this game. Now, as for what Remedy is working on right now, Remedy has already confirmed way a long time ago, a while ago, Remedy had already confirmed that um, they were in development of a new game. They did not announce what, but that it was going to be for the next generation consoles. That would include, they, they were not specific, but that would include the PS4 and whatever this next Xbox is going to be. They didn't show anything at Sony's PlayStation uh, 4 announcement. And I thought there was a 50-50 chance that they would. Because they did it, Remedy has already quoted as saying that they will be showing something new this year. At least announcing it. It might not be out this year, but they will at least be announcing it. Highly likely that this unannounced next generation project will probably get shown. My hope is that it's Alan Wake 2. It would be nice to see. I think Remedy is a fantastic game developer. They've got fantastic staff. They made one of my favorite Xbox 360 games, which is now on the PC. They've already said that they really are not, you know, doing Xbox, uh, PlayStation. They did not really do PlayStation 3 development. They're, and I think they know that they're really known on Microsoft's consoles, so highly likely they could do a, you know, Microsoft, they could strike a publishing deal with Microsoft in exchange for 360 exclusivity, I don't know, but I'm sorry, our next generation uh, Xbox exclusivity. That would be, you know, that's what they've had in the past, that would be interesting to see, certainly. I really just want to see Alan Wake 2, and since I know that Remedy is not working on the current generation platforms anymore, highly likely that whatever they're going to announce next is going to be either on the next Xbox or the next PlayStation. And hopefully it's on way too, because they're, they, they, you know, I really like that game. and The story is, un, is unconcluded. Continuing on with third-party developers, let's stick with the elephant in the room that everybody knows about. Here's a war. Probably the biggest third-party IP that Microsoft that is exclusive to the Xbox 360 is the Gears of War series. It is not owned by Microsoft, although it has been published by Microsoft. It's only appeared on the Xbox 360 and the PC uh, platforms. Um, this is probably one of the biggest selling franchises on the Xbox. It's done very well for Epic. Cliff Blazinski is no longer part or uh, directing uh, of Epic, so in all likelihood, Blazinski is probably not going to be um, working or directing the next Gears of War game. I don't believe he directed this one. He's, uh, he's, he's now left Epic. But um, it would be really, really awesome. I think that uh, Gears of War was really like, when the first Gears of War game came out, it, always, it kind of set the bar for what the 360 could do in comparison to the uh, PlayStation 3. It's like, PlayStation 3 comes out, Gears of War comes out. So it, it was pretty much like... In, their fates were intertwined. And I'd like to think that I know Gears of War Judgment just came out, so obviously I've got my Gears of War fix, and I think a lot of people have gotten their recent Gears of War fix. But uh, it would be interesting to see just what they could do. And they've already got the engine. Epic is in development right now. These were using Unreal Engine 3. Unreal Engine 4 is already uh, being demoed and stuff like that. It will work on the next generation Xbox and the next generation PlayStation 4. Uh, I believe Sony and Microsoft, I, I believe Epic already confirmed that, and certainly Sony did. But, um, at least for the PlayStation 4, it would be awesome, awesome to see a new Gears of War game on that new engine. Granted, I would also like to see a new Unreal Tournament game. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. I'd like to see a, a new Unreal Tournament game for Unreal Engine 4. Call it, you know, call it Unreal Tournament 4. That'd be nice. 
Finally, uh, the last one I want to talk about is a, a game series that we haven't seen in a very long time by a developer that is actually owned by Microsoft, and we really haven't seen them do too much recently. They are a, a, a company that is held quite near and dear to the hearts of many on the internet. I've heard many, many people ask about uh, what these guys are up to. Of course, I'm talking about Rare. I honestly think that Rare should have a showing, or Rare should be showing what they're working on. I don't think we've really seen too much of them since the, play, the Xbox 360's launch, and of course with the Xbox Live avatars and things like that. Um, I want to see a new Perfect Dark game. I think Perfect Dark Zero was a cool step in the right direction. Um, obviously I think its multiplayer was a lot better than its single player, but given the fact of how classic the original Perfect Dark was, how interesting the characters were, at least I thought that how interesting the characters were, and how how important the franchise is. I mean, this is like another one of the big franchises that Microsoft owns that we haven't really seen in a while. Um, it was, you know, like I said, a launch title for the original Xbox 360. It was pretty much the first major multiplayer game that a lot of people were playing on the new Xbox Live. Um, in fact, actually, I remember that Bungie was writing about that they were playing when the Xbox 360 came out. They had kind of switched it up from playing Halo 2 matches two Perfect Dark Zero matches in multiplayer because I guess they you know they needed some variety eventually. So this became like a de facto multiplayer game at launch. It would be interesting to see, like I said, we've already got a basis of a comparison with Joanna Dark and things like that. They have re-released the original Perfect Dark to Xbox Live Arcade on the 360. The time is right. You know, the time would be right to see a new Perfect Dark game or see anything from Rare. I'm sure probably people are going to say, well, I want to see a new Killer Instinct game or something like that. Maybe. I don't know who owns the rights to Killer Instinct. It might be Nintendo. I don't know if Rare owns the rights to it. I'm sure somebody will post a comment or something like that, but um, I don't. we haven't seen from Killer Instinct either, and because of that, uh, I, I don't know what Rare owns. I don't know if Rare or Microsoft or, Microsoft or uh, Nintendo own Killer Instinct, but I think that a lot of people might prefer to see a new Killer Instinct come from Rare? Maybe. Uh, that, for me, I want to see Perfect Dark, but um, who knows? I, I'd be cool to see anything new or, or edgy from Rare. I, I really think they should go back to doing some hip, edgy games. Um, it's been a while since we've seen them do one. So there you have it, guys. These are just my five cents of what I think that Microsoft should be showing off at the next Xbox conference. Let's face it, these are game development platforms. We got to see games on them. And I honestly think that the best way that you can get sales is, at least for launch, is to bring in classic franchises seen in a new light. I think it's the best way to show off the increased fidelity and the new capabilities of the platforms. I think it's the best way to um, show off how cool the games are, because you'll have a frame of reference. Um, and plus, you've got games like, let's say, you know, Gears of War Judgment, which ended on a cliffhanger. And if you, actually, well, the game really didn't end on a cliffhanger. The other campaign, the second campaign, actually had the cliffhanger. Um, uh, the Perfect Dark series, I'm sure, would probably have a cliffhanger, or I, uh, I can't, actually, I can't remember. I, Perfect Dark Zero led into Perfect Dark. I, I never finished Perfect Dark, so I don't know if there was a cliffhanger there, but I, I'm sure, I know a lot of people would have characters that would want to see come back. Um, Alan Wake, definitely a cliffhanger, even after American Nightmare and the DLC, it was still a cliffhanger, so absolutely, please give me Alan Wake 2. I will buy that day one, if it's announced, for, uh, Remedy. Um, Perfect Dark, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Project Gotham Racing, I, Racing games are popular, and PS4 already has announced their racing games, so definitely something that we want to look into. And of course, who can forget Halo 4's ending, the huge cliffhanger there, what happened with Cortana, which I will not go into and spoil. Halo 5 has already been announced. It's logical that they would do a Halo showing. It'd be the best way to show off just how improved the Master Chief, right? what, what you can do with this technology. So there you have it, guys. Those are my two cents. Uh, the next Xbox will likely be revealed on May 21st. That is not a release day. That's just an announcement day. Um, set your calendars. They will be broadcasting the stream on Xbox.com and Xbox Live. Um, to say the least, you'll be able to watch it. I might just take a day off from work to see it. I don't know. But uh, there you have it, guys. Until next time, this is Maniac with GameAccess.net. Over and out.